Hello, I'm David Swanson and this is MathsWithDavid.com. Today we're going to be looking at a P1 trigonometric functions question, which involves the use of transformations knowledge. So that's a question from the Cambridge International A-Levels Pure Mathematics 1 paper. I'll start by reading carefully through the question. The function f goes from x to 5 plus 3 cosine of half of x is defined for 0 is less than equal to x is less than equal to 2 pi. 1. Solve the equation fx equals 7, giving your answer correct to two decimal places. 2. Sketch the graph of y equals fx. 3. Explain why f has an inverse. 4. Obtain an expression for f to the minus 1 of x. So the first part, we want to solve the equation fx equals 7. So we simply put our function 5 plus 3 cos of x over 2 equal to 7. And then we simply have to solve this equation. So we subtract from both sides to give us, from both sides to give us 3 cosine of x over 2 equals 2. And then we divide both sides by 3 to give us the cosine of x over 2 equals 2 over 3. Now if we stop at this stage and draw a little graph with a unit circle on, our cosine is our horizontal distance from the origin. So if cosine of x over 2 equals 2 o <coughs> excuse me, is 2 over 3, we can imagine a line to two thirds of the way from the origin to the right hand side of the circle, a vertical line, and the two points where that crosses the circle these are going to be our values of x over 2. Now, our domain is 0 through to 2 pi. So the one we see in the first quadrant there, when we, when we find x, it's going to be double that, so it's going to exist. The one in the, in the fourth quadrant, when we double it, it won't exist. So let's go ahead and we'll leave the fourth quadrant one in, and we'll see at the end why it's not within our 0 to 2 pi range. So the two solutions that we've got there are x over 2 equals the inverse cosine of 2 over 3 and x over 2 equals 2 pi, that's the full circle, minus the inverse cosine of 2 over 3. Now that gives us x over 2 equals 0.841 and x over 2 is approximately 6.28 minus 0.841 which gives us the two values when we multiply both sides through by 2 x equals 1.68 and x equals 2 times by 5.44 which is 10.88 and this is where we were talking about multiplying by 2 to get the value of x our second value at 10.88 is outside of our domain it's greater than 2 pi so there's only one answer for us which is x equals 1.68 to two decimal places so the second question we want to draw the graph so the easiest way to draw the graph once, when this is a variation on a trigonometric function is to take the internal function, the cosine function in this case, and to apply the translations and transformations that have been applied to it a step at a time. So the best way to do this is to start at the inside and say, instead of cosine x, we've got cosine of x over 2. So if we draw our regular cosine x graph just between 0 and and 2 pi. Cosine of x over 2 is a compression of the graph by a half. Now a compression by a half is equivalent of saying we're stretching by 2. So what we actually do is we stretch the graph by 2. So instead of it crossing the x-axis at pi over 2, it crosses at pi. We then have 3 times by cosine of x over 2 this is essentially stretching the y-axis because it's, it's outside of the cosine function now. So we're essentially stretching the y by 3. So instead of the, the graph crossing the y-axis at 1, it's going to cross it at, at 3 now and, go, and, cross it, uh, and go down as far as minus 3, still crossing the x-axis at pi. And then what we're doing, we've got a 5 plus 3 cosine of x over 2. So we're adding 5 to the y-axis, which is effectively a translation of 5 
in the vertical direction. So we move everything five up. So instead of crossing at three, it now crosses at eight. And instead of going down to minus three, it now goes down to two with the change in uh, direction of the curve still being at pi. And that's our final curve. We then, one mark for explaining why f has an inverse, we simply need to say that f has an inverse because it is a one-to-one -one function. Remember, for a function to exist, there has to be a y value for every different x value, and for the inverse to exist, there has to be an x value for every different y value. And that's true because in our restricted domain, it's a one-to-one -one function. And then we want an expression for the inverse of x. Now we have a technique for doing this. When we want to get the inverse of a function, we can simply switch our variables, our x and our y, and rearrange the equation to make y the subject of the equation. So we rewrite the equation as x equals 5 plus 3 cosine of y over 2. We then subtract our 5 and divide through by 3 to give cosine of y over 2 equals x minus 5 over 3. We then take the inverse of both, uh, cosine of both sides to give us y over 2 equals arc cos of x minus 5 over 3. And then we multiply both sides by 2 to give y equals 2 arc cosine of x minus 5 over 3. So that, to write it in the original form they gave us in the question, the inverse function takes x to 2 arc cos of x minus 5 over 3. So let's go back through and look at where the marks are assigned in this question. We get one accuracy mark for finding that cosine of x over 2 equals 2 over 3. We get a method mark for carrying that through to find the solution for x if we have some numerical mistake there, and an accuracy mark if we've not got a numerical mistake and it's 1.68. Then in the second part of the question, we've got two marks. We've got one mark for applying the, the stretch, the x translation, transformations, and one mark for applying the y transformations. Then in the third part of the question, we just get one mark for explaining that it's exactly one-to-one -one function. And in the third part of the question, which has three marks, we get a method mark for switching our variables, a method mark for then rearranging them to make y the subject, and an accuracy mark if we accurately find that the inverse function is x goes to 2 of inverse cos of x minus 5 over 3. So I hope that's been useful. We have a number of pure one mathematics work exam work solutions on the website at www.mathswithdavid.com uh, and you can also find them on the YouTube channel and there'll be links at the end to a playlist of those and to an opportunity to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Any questions or comments please feel free to put them below and we look forward to seeing you in another video.